Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be building part one of the Five Star Stories 1144 V Siren Neptune plastic kit from Volks. This will be the initial construction before painting, which will be in a future video. Up until now, I've only built the 1100 Five Star Stories kits. So this will be a new experience for me. But looking through the manual, it looks like it'll be pretty straightforward in the same kind of style as the 1100 kits are. And once again, I wanna thank folks USA for sending me this kit to build for you guys. And let's get started. One thing that's great about Volks is they don't child-proof their model kits. These little points on the horn can really do some damage. So like I mentioned, this is my first 144 and I just wanted to compare the detail which actually looks pretty good for the scale if you compare it to the 1100. The only thing I noticed is some of the panel lines seem a little shallow, but that's not a huge deal because that can be fixed with the scribing tools. Here's a close-up of the shoulder that shows the insignia. So I noticed a seam that's going to be on the head and I'm checking back to the reference photos to see if it's supposed to be there or not for when it's time to start filling seams and it should be there so I'm going to leave it. You can see it right here just to the left of the horn. Even though they're small, the detail is actually really good on these compared to the 1100s.
So I cut too close on this part, which I'm about to point out here, and took out a little chunk that I'm going to have to fill in. A little annoyed about that. This is another view of that part that I had mentioned that I took a chunk out of it. I basically just cut too close and yeah, that's what happens. I also want to note that you might notice me using different cements. I have Mr. Hobby Cement S and I have Tamiya Cement. The reason I'm using both is I'm just trying to decide which I like better because I enjoy using both. But it seems like this plastic works better with Tamiya for some reason compared to the other kits that I've built. So I've made another boo-boo. This inside part of the skirts had these little, I don't know what you call them, tabs. And they're supposed to be there, but I sanded one off thinking it was a nub but they're not gonna be visible from normal angles. So I'm just gonna leave it. I also decided at this part that I'm gonna stick everything temporarily together with blue tack and masking tape for the test fitting. These parts go uh, on the shoulder area, I guess, the neck area. And it looks like they're supposed to clip in so they're movable, but they don't really stay in very well, so I think they're going to have to be glued in place. So the skirt armors have nubs that are really close to the edge and the edge is really sharp and kind of flat so I'm just going really slowly with the sanding so that I don't overdo it. As you can see, still working on the skirt armor. Like I said, I'm taking it kind of slow because it has a sharp edge. And I don't want to soften that edge. So 
So there are quite a few parts on this kit where the nubs are really close to some detail sections. This is one of those. You have to really be careful you don't mess up the raised detail. I tried uh, a few different sanding techniques with this and uh, a knife and sandpaper actually folded over seemed to work best. Which I think I'll show that in a sec. This is actually a glass nanofile that I bought for Gunplus stuff. It kind of had a harsh edge on it, so I went back to the sandpaper. So you don't always need to buy expensive modeling tools for scale models. Like for example, I'm going to use some ordinary wooden clothespins to clamp these pieces together.
just wanted to point out that some of the leg armors have some nubs that are in the recessed areas and they're really close to panel lines so got to be careful with those remember how i cut too close earlier and took a chunk out of a part well for this one i cut a little further away off of the sprue and instead of cleaning it up with the nippers i'm just going to clean it up with the knife This is one of the few parts that has a big seam that needs filling, and it's just the shin armor. On the back armor plates that go on the legs, they're specific to each side. And you can tell the difference by this little notch that's in it. And that's gonna be on the inside. You can tell which is the inside by the hole there which plugs into the uh, hip joint.
So these are the elbow joints and they're different for each side. The way you can tell which is which is there's a little part that sticks out on the outer edge, which you can kind of see on the right side, it's sticking out there, kind of a little point, and the other side doesn't have it. And how to tell which is which is the one without the little point is the right arm, and this actually says left arm. You can double check it with the bottom drawings. Left arm, which is here, and you see the notch there, and it's not there on the right arm. This is another example where the nub is really close to the panel line. It's actually almost on it. So in this case, when I'm sanding it down, I'm probably going to have to uh, rescribe that. I think it's unavoidable in this case.
So you can see how shallow the panel lines are on these uh, shoulder armor, I guess they are. Yeah, that's going to have to be deepened with scribing tools. So that's it for the initial construction phase. In the next video, I will be filling seams and preparing for paint, and then I'll do the painting as well. So hopefully I'll be back for that video. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.